Hello everyone. Welcome back to DMG Chemistry Classes and myself Dr. Mahindra Guleria, Associate Professor in Chemistry. And in this video, I am continuing my discussion on NMR spectroscopy. And today I will discuss PMR spectrum and origin of signal. So friends, in my previous video, we discussed the principle of NMR spectroscopy where I told you that for a hydrogen nucleus or for a proton two energy states or two nuclear spin states are possible. One is plus half and second is minus half. And these two energy states have same energy. That is, these are degenerate. What this degeneracy is lifted when we apply external magnetic field. Okay, then after the application of external magnetic field, we get a lower energy state which is called as alpha spin state or plus half and another is of higher energy which is called as beta spin state or minus half state okay and i also told you that energy difference between these two energy states increases with increase in the strength of external magnetic field and I also uh, discussed that the proton will preferably occupy the lower energy state. And then we irradiate this proton with varying radio frequencies. And when the radio frequency or the energy of the radio frequency becomes equal to this energy difference, then that radiation is absorbed and proton is excited from the lower energy level to higher energy level. And when this energy of uh, radio frequency matches with this, uh, this energy difference, then it is called as resonance. Okay, so now let us explain this phenomenon or this principle uh, by plotting a graph here. So here along y-axis we have intensity of absorption and along x-axis we have radio frequency. So as I said that we irradiate uh, this proton with varying radio frequencies but all frequencies will not be absorbed okay because their ener their energy will not be equal to this energy difference so here all these frequencies have very less intensity of absorption because their energy doesn't correspond to this energy gap but when we reach at this frequency okay then energy of this frequency becomes equal to this energy gap and this uh, radio wave is absorbed and proton is excited from lower energy level to higher energy level and spin flip occurs. So this radio frequency will have a very high value of intensity of absorption. So this radio frequency is having a very high value of intensity of absorption. So we obtain a peak here. And this peak is called as PMR signal. Okay. And rest of the higher frequency uh, frequencies are also not absorbed as their energy doesn't correspond to this energy gap. Okay. So as I said, this peak corresponding to this frequency is called as NMR uh, signal. And this plot or this graph is called as PMR spectrum. Okay. So friends, we can obtain PMR spectrum of a compound in two, pay, two ways. Okay, so here what I have done, I have kept the uh, magnetic field constant and we have varied the radio frequencies. And I want to tell you that when we keep, you know, magnetic field constant at 14,100 Gauss and we vary radio frequency, then the, a, a proton absorbs at frequency 60 megahertz okay so in this case what we have done we have kept the magnetic field constant and uh, varied the radio frequencies but it is found that it is more convenient to keep the radio frequency constant and vary the magnetic field okay and what we will do now we will keep the radio frequency constant that we will irradiate the proton or the sample with constant radio frequency and we will vary the magnetic field and as i said that the difference between the two energy state increases with increase in the strength of magnetic field so suppose that uh, here we have these two energy states 
plus half and minus half and they are degenerate as I will start increasing the strength of external magnetic field the energy gap will be start developing between these two states and as we increase the uh, strength of magnetic field further then I told you that this energy gap will be further enhanced and at some value of magnetic field okay suppose that uh, after we increase the magnetic field further and the energy gap increases further between these two states and at this magnetic field the energy difference between these two spin states okay becomes equal to the energy of the radio frequency which we have kept constant okay so the proton will be here and when this uh, energy gap will be reached energy of the radio frequency will become equal to this energy gap and obviously that radiation will be absorbed and we will get you know signal at that point okay so as i said that if we have kept radio frequency constant at 60 megahertz then when we will reach the 14100 magnetic field then this energy gap or this energy difference will become equal to the energy of this radio frequency and absorption will take place and we will get a signal in the NMR spectrum. So in this way we can obtain the NMR spectrum by keeping the radio frequency constant and varying the magnetic field. So these are the two ways. Now let us explain NMR spectrum with an example. So here I am taking the example of your, your ethanol. Okay, so in ethanol we have six protons or six hydrogen nuclei, three plus two plus one. Okay, and we can expect that all these six hydrogen nuclei or protons they will absorb at the same magnetic field. Let us explain it here. Suppose that all these six protons are present here in the ground state. Okay. So all these six protons are present here. And now we have kept the radio frequency constant that is 60 megahertz. And we just started uh, increasing the external magnetic field or the strength of external magnetic field and when the strength of magnetic field will reach sorry 14100 gauss then the energy difference will be created and uh, uh, whose energy corresponds to the energy of this radio frequency and this radio frequency will be absorbed and all the protons will be excited from the lower energy level to higher energy level in this manner okay this means that we will obtain only one signal for these six protons as they have absorbed the frequency of same frequency uh, at the same magnetic field so signal will be at 40,100 uh, gauss so we can uh, I can say that when the magnetic field is varied then along x-axis we will have strength of applied magnetic field okay but this is not the case we don't obtain a single signal for all the six protons here we obtain the three signals in the spectrum of ethanol so let us explain it that why it happens so friends the electronic environment of all the protons in the ethanol is not same. So let us explain it. So here I am writing the ethanol in this fashion. Okay. So oxygen is an electronegative element and it will exhibit negative inductive effect. And due to its high electronegativity, 
the oxygen atom will be, uh, will withdraw this electron pair towards itself and so the this bond pair will be attracted more towards the oxygen atom and this hydrogen or proton will have less electron density around it likewise oxygen will also exert minus i effect in this direction okay and uh, this carbon atom will acquire positive charge and which in turn will withdraw the electron pairs these electron pairs towards itself and these two protons okay will have or will also have less electron density but more as compared to this proton because here the this proton is directly attached to your oxygen atom whereas these protons are not directly attached with oxygen here this minus i uh, uh, inductive effect is conveyed through carbon atom so as compared to this proton these two these two hydrogen atoms or protons they will have more electron density around it okay so these two protons they will have same electron density around them so these will be equivalent protons likewise this inductive effect will be extended further along the carbon chain what uh, its uh, you know its uh, effect will be less so this means that here we will have very less positive charge so these electrons but these bond pairs will be attracted less towards this carbon atom okay so these three protons they will have more electron density as compared to the, these protons uh, and this proton okay so these protons will be equivalent as they will be having same electron density around them okay so this means that we have three types of proton uh, in ethanol let let us represent it by a type then b then c okay and they will have different electron densities around them so they are in different chemical environment so these three types of protons will absorb at different applied magnetic field okay that is they will give us signal at different applied magnetic field this means that instead of having one signal in the nmr spectrum of ethanol okay we will have three signals in the nmr spectrum of the ethanol okay and here i want to tell you that all these protons will absorb at 14100 gauss all these protons will absorb that at 14100 gauss but to make these protons feel this field we have to apply different different magnetic field externally मतलब ये कि ये सभी प्रोटॉन जो हैं तीनों प्रकार के प्रोटॉन इनका सिग्नल 14,100 गॉस पे ही आएगा लेकिन इन प्रोटॉन्स को इस मैग्नेटिक फील्ड को महसूस करवाने के लिए या फील करवाने के लिए जो बाहर से एक्सटर्नली हमें मैग्नेटिक फील्ड अप्लाई करनी पड़ेगी वो डिफरेंट होगी ओके और जो सिग्नल जो आता है वो डिफरेंट अप्लाइड फील्ड पर आएगा और हमें तीन सिग्नल मिलेंगे दैट वी विल ऑबटेन थ्री सिग्नल्स okay and i will explain this concept in detail uh, in my next video when i will be discussing shielding and deshielding of protons and chemical shift so keep watching my videos like and share my videos and don't forget to subscribe my channel thank you very much